Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Turnstile. My name's Harry and what I wanted to do today is just jump back on here just to give you a bit of a rundown on the week that I've had. I know it's slightly out of order in terms of the games, but obviously on Thursday I managed to get over to Portugal for my first European away day, which was a great experience. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of a rundown in terms of the journey itself, the experience of going to follow Arsenal across Europe. Um, and most importantly, the prices of, of what it would cost to do something like this. In terms of the journey itself, what we decided to do, we know that the airlines, when they see British teams, London teams going across Europe, they jack the prices up of their flights massively. So what we thought, we would be quite smart. We wouldn't fly direct to Lisbon. We'd fly into Porto. From Porto, what you can then look at doing is you can get a train across the country all the way up the coastline from Porto to Lisbon. And then from there, you can find yourself nice and close to the ground. So how much does this all cost, I hear you ask? So the flights themselves, we flew from Luton Airport. It was £180 um, each, and that was obviously including the return flight. Once we landed in Portugal to get across town, we had to travel across Porto to get to the train station. Um, that was only £15. The taxis in Portugal did seem to be impressively cheap. Once we got to the train station, obviously you've got the train at Porto to Lisbon, Lisbon to Porto on your way home. That worked out £35 each way. Again, the taxi to the ground itself, we only paid £10. And we stayed in a, a Holiday Inn for one night. And in terms of Holiday Inns, as far as they go, it was actually a really nice Holiday Inn. So Big up the Holiday Inn over in um, in Lisbon. That was £135 for the night, so £65 per person essentially, and the match day ticket itself was £35. So in total, you're looking at a rough figure um, of around £375 each. Now, the train journey itself was just over three hours, so you've got to think, obviously, if we're leaving at around half past one, we were going to be getting into Lisbon just before five o'clock, realistically. With the game kicking off at 5.45, it was making things incredibly tight. So it was supposed to be nice and easy. Obviously, we were going to fly on the, the Thursday morning. We were scheduled to leave um, 7 a.m. We were going to land at about 20 past nine. And me and my, my girlfriend, we were really, really worried that we weren't going to be able to get all the way across Portugal in time to actually make the game. Little did we know that we actually had a whole world of time that we could have used because we got stuck on Luton's runway in the snow being de-iced over and over again for just under three hours. We didn't land um, in Portugal until about 12, 12.30. I think we ended up taking off around sort of 20 past nine. So actually it might have been around 11.30. So once we got to the airport, we were thinking, oh my God, we've missed the first three possible trains that we could get. There's no way we're going to be able to make it. Let's run, get to the taxi rank. Let's make sure that we're the first people in the taxi getting it across town. Managed to go through, absolutely nobody at passport control. Nice and quick, jump straight in a taxi, arrive at the train station. We can see that our train, platform eight, almost ready to leave go up to the counter and buy tickets so we can hear all these drums and whistles and we can see people with tents and barbecues out the front. Obviously didn't have any idea what was going on and then very quickly was told that there's train strikes. The train that we were supposed to be getting was cancelled. Now we did speak to him, there was going to be a train an hour later, um, I think it was about half past one in the end that we managed to get a train. Now once we arrived in Lisbon, we had to get in another taxi to get across town and make it across to the stadium. So it was supposed to be about a 20 minute drive. As we jumped in the taxi, we realized that we were in peak rush hour for Lisbon. We did not move at all. We sat in the taxi for about half an hour. It got to five o'clock and we realized that we were not moving at all. So we took the executive decision. We thought if we're ever gonna be able to make it to this game, we've got to jump out this taxi here. We've just got to do a half hour walk we'll make sure that we're there just for kickoff. We should even be able to get a pint before the game. So as we, we jump out of the taxi, we ask the taxi driver directions, really nice bloke, points us in the right direction. And as we read an email that was sent out from the club, it, it reads on there, there's a specific line. It doesn't really give too much context. It just says, 
under no circumstances do fans get off at Campo Grande, Campo Grande, I believe was the, the train station name. So we're walking along, we've obviously put it into to Google Maps, trying to find our location. As we're walking, we are realizing that we are getting surrounded by Lisbon fans, just more and more of them. And we seem to be getting deeper and deeper into enemy territory. The songs are going off, people are singing, they've got the smoke bombs out. And as we look on the map, we realize that we are outside Campo Grande Stadium. So we sort of looked at each other. Luckily, we didn't have any club colours on. We just said, heads down, don't speak, don't let them know you're English. Let's just get into the ground. Obviously, we walked past the um, the section with the ultras, which I don't really understand what happens there. They seem to have a designated doorway entrance for the ultras, but it seems that their stand only has about 50-odd people in. The rest of it looks empty. They've got the drummer, they've got the flagman. I don't know if it's something that they just sort of have to themselves i don't know if anyone knows what goes on over in, in lisbon and so why that stand is empty apart from those guys um if anyone does know it'd be it'd be great to hear but the home fans themselves they were excellent the stadium didn't look full to be fair when we saw it and you think about some of the premier league games that we've gone to when you see what looks like a full stadium and the atmosphere that you get looking at the number that was in there you didn't think it was going to be that loud but they made some noise the lisbon fans it was a really really good atmosphere I mean, going to the Emirates every week, it, it's loud, but I think if you had a season ticket at Sport in Lisbon, you'd have tinnitus. Uh, tinnitus. The way that it's so high-pitched, um, everything is whistled at, everything is high-pitched, and I know that it gets joked about a lot in English football, but I really like that they, they played songs after every single goal. Um, a bit of Chelsea dagger going off, gets the fans going. I thought it was good entertainment. In terms of the game itself... Um, it was as to be expected. I didn't think that we'd go with a strong team with everything that's going on in the Premier League. It was a very open game. We saw um, a huge number of changes in terms of the back line. We saw Kivior make his debut. I don't think he was terrible. Obviously, he wasn't the best player on the pitch. Um, but he's, he's a young lad. He's starting. It's his first game. It's quite a hostile environment. I don't want to go too hard on him. I thought he played quite well. I think what was very interesting is Arteta, after the game, actually said that if we defend like that, we're not going to win the league. Obviously, jumping forward and seeing the Fulham game yesterday, it was very evident that he sort of gone away, had that conversation with the players, and we looked solid against Fulham. And it's great to see that when we do make these little mistakes or these little slip-ups, we maybe lose a little bit of form, we identify it, and we change it. But in terms of the, the game itself, it was end-to-end. -end. It was really entertaining. I think the Martinelli chance where he's almost repl replicated the goal that he scored against Chelsea and he's run the whole distance of the pitch, the atmosphere as he's gone through is absolutely amazing. It would have been such a great goal to see him score. I'm gutted as well myself, as everyone takes the mick out of me for my close friends. I'm a huge Hector Bellerin fan. I was absolutely gutted not to see him play. Hopefully he's going to be there, make his Emirates return on Thursday, which I think will be a really interesting game. Although I'm fully focused on the Premier League, if you gave me a choice of the two trophies, of course, you're going to pick the Premier League every single time. But at the same time, I think the double's on. We can definitely do it. Um, I think Sporting Lisbon are, are one of the hardest teams that we could have got in the draw, if not the hardest team. But when you look at the, the remaining fixtures, obviously you've got um, Man United, they turn over Betis. It obviously looks like they're going to be going through. Um, when you look at someone like Juventus as well, although the big name, probably not as scary as many people would think this season with everything that's going on over there, I would say they're the, the two clubs that would, would really be the hardest matchup. Obviously, you've got Union Berlin, Bayer Leverkusen in there as well, uh, Feyenoord, Shakhtar Donetsk. So they're all teams that I think that we could beat, and not with a, a full strength team either. So Thursday's going to be really, really interesting. Hopefully we play well. We see more of Gabriel Jesus come in. Hopefully get a few more minutes, get that sharpness back up. But he did look sharp when he came on against Fulham. But that's it from me in terms of my trip across to Sporting. Hopefully it's the first of many European away trips. But in the meantime, we are on the road to 100 subscribers. Obviously a huge landmark. So any likes, comments, subscribes that you can give would really go a long way. And thank you for joining the very small community, which is the Turnstile.